In this example, we're going to display a set of data in a stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot just shows you the general distribution of data, gives you an idea of what's really happening with a data set that you can't tell just by looking at a bunch of numbers thrown together like this. So to start, it might be helpful to decide on the key that you want to use while making your stem and leaf plot. So to figure out a key, just take a look at the numbers that you have. Most of these seem to be two-digit numbers. So let's say we just pick one of the numbers. We'd go with 26. It honestly doesn't matter which one you pick. And when you determine what your key is, basically you're going to figure out which number is the stem and which number is the leaf. So we're going to say that... 2 is the stem, we're going to put kind of a bar between it, and 6 is the leaf, that that is going to represent the number 26. It's possible that a 2 as your stem and a 6 as a leaf could be 2.6, if that line in the middle kind of represented a decimal. All right, so there's our key. Now what we want to do is identify the smallest number and the biggest number of our data set. So if you look through this, you can see 3 is the smallest number, and it looks like 46 is the biggest number. So keeping in mind that we're representing these as two-digit numbers, 3 is actually a 0, 3, and 46 is just 46. So the first digit of each number is going to be your stem. So maybe I'll label that as stem. So we're going to do a 0, and we have to go all the way up to 4, 0, 1, two, three, four. Now the leaf is going to be the second digit. So we're going to start with the smallest number and we're going to work all the way up to that 46. So three is the smallest number, so zero is my stem and then the leaf is a three. So a zero, three, this represents one number in my data set. All right, so then maybe I'll cross that off you want to find the next biggest number, and it looks like we have a 5 over here. So the 0 is the stem for that, and you're just going to put the 5 right next to the 3. So right there you have a 0, 3 representing the 3, and a 0, 5 representing the 5. And we'll cross that one off. And then basically you just want to put all your numbers in order. I don't see any other single digits, so now we can go on to the tech or the I guess the teens, where the first digit is a 1. Finding the smallest 1, um, it looks like we have a 15, 16, and 17. So we're going to put a 5 first. That represents the 15. You've got the 1 and the 5, then the 16, and then the 17. So 15, 16, 17. Oh, and there is an 18. So down here on the right, we have an 18. It might be easy just to put all your numbers in order first, and then you have them ordered, and then this part will go faster. All right, so in the 20s, look for the smallest number. We have a 21 right here. We'll cross that off. And if you see, we have another 21. So each, each number in the data set gets represented. So we're going to have another one, which shows us that you have two 21s. Looks like we have a 22 and a 23. Uh, let's see, there's a two 26s, so 6 and 6 represent both 26s, and we have a 27 and a 28. All right, so we've got everything in our data set. The last number is the 46. Because we don't have any numbers in the 30s, you still want to leave the 3 there, so you can see that there's a gap in data, and then your last number will be 46. All right. So we just did the stem and leaf plot. At a glance now, I can see, hey, look at all these numbers in the 20s that had um, the most frequency. You can tell there's nothing in the 30s. You only have 146. So these are some comments we could make on the graph without um, knowing that by looking at the original data set.